Hi guys, so Sniperhead here, and today I'm on the floor of my room, and I'm pretty excited because I've got my two new Dell Power Edge 2650s. Um, I got these just yesterday, and um, yeah, I got two of them. Uh, they've only got one SCSI drive in them. They all take, well, they both take SCSI drives. So this is just a 32 gigabyte um, high touchy IBM SCSI drive. And it goes in here. The rest of these are just all blanks, or blank trays. And uh, yeah, so um, I'm just going to give you a bit of a tour of it. Um, I'm not going to do any setup because I'm having some problems with that at the moment. Uh, it doesn't even seem to like Ubuntu. Because um, one thing to note, these are not 64-bit. These are only 32-bit operating systems. Um, so yeah. But uh, we'll scoot around to the back. These are this sides. Uh, this is where the um, rack rails go, and I do have some rack rails for them. Uh, I think this is what. No, that's the other side. This is the ones for the right hand side, and they like this. And when you pull out your server, your server extends out like that, and you push that latch in to make the rails go in. And they just slot on the side there, sort of like that, and then they bolt on to your rear and front of your rack. Oh, front of your rack. Uh, what I've also got is a cable management arm that just goes on the other side, so that when you uh, so this is the left-hand rack rail, and they work basically so that. If I can get it out, if I can get it out, I mean, there we go. So what these things do is one side, if I extend the whole thing out, one side slots in to there, like that. Oh gosh, this is hard to do with one hand. Um, goes in like that and you'll hear it click or oh, well sort of hear it click you'll see it click um, then the other side goes into the rear oh no it's come out hasn't it yeah okay well, the other side goes into the rear this goes in here uh, I'm doing them the right way aren't I here yeah. huh um, point is though that when these rails retract yeah when these rails retract and when your server is pushed in oh gosh <clears throat> when your server is pushed in well they don't do that anyway basically without me failing um, they're just supposed to. Oh no, they pop out. They're just supposed to um, keep your cables nice and neat at the back, mainly when you pull your server out. Um, anyway, moving on from there, I might do an install video separate to put them in. And sorry for the shaky movement again. Um, so at the front of these servers, let's start at the front. Um, we've got a um, keyboard mouse port, PS2 port, um, a Vega port, a VGA, a USB port. And uh, a little front status thing, um, and it can scroll whatever you want. I've just got mine Delta on the top line. That's the code name for this server, and what it's running Ubuntu and its PowerEdge 2650. Uh, then under there, you've got your light that makes these blink, and when um, you push that, uh, it uh, makes a corresponding one blink on the rear. I'll show you in a minute. Turn that off. Uh, under that, you got your power button, two LAN indicators, uh, I think, that's just a status light, and what looks like a fan header, um, but it's not a fan header. Well, it is, but it doesn't run a fan, so I've taken out one of the fans from the inside, one of um, these little things, hot swap fans, and it looks like one of those fan pins, and um, somewhere or another, they actually fit, like you can actually plug them in. 
just did, uh, doesn't seem to work. Here we go. There's another one. I think they go, what, that way? That way? So they fit in perfectly. It's just when you turn it on, it doesn't actually spin up. Uh, so let's move around to the back. And at the rear here, I've got redundant power supplies. Um, so these ones, and you can just hot swap as well by pulling that. Oh gosh, this is hard. Um, pulling that, and sliding them out, and then they just go back in and clip in. I've got both power cables connected though. Uh, then we've got two Ethernet jacks, uh, two COM ports, or serial ports, your mouse and keyboard PS2 ports, uh, VGA port, two USB ports, and a management Ethernet port. And you've got your three PCI slots, or PCI-X, not PCI-Express, just PCI-X. Um, and a vent at the back and a nice little handle to grab. Because these things are, well, pretty heavy. I mean, I've, I've held heavier servers, but <laughs> they're still, you know, pretty heavy. Um, and I've just obviously just got the two stacked on top of each other. Um, and all of these Ethernet cables go up and just go into my switch in there. So the two management, that's server one, that's server two. And so, yeah. Uh, apart from that, now you might be thinking, well, you saw back there, that I have something plugged into that USB port. That is these two keyboards, one for each computer, um, and a monitor plugged into one of them. Now you might think, why don't I just plug in these keyboards into the front USB port, into the front USB port, um, where I had the monitor plugged in, because obviously I'm using the front VGA port as the monitor, and now my monitor's gone black. If I take that out, it says analog input, um, self-test, you know, nothing's working. Now, the reason why I can plug in the VGA, but I don't plug in the USBs, um, when I plugged in a USB keyboard, the keyboard didn't actually register. It came up with a keyboard failure message. So, not really sure what that's about. And I've had, I've seen some other people having problems using the front um, PS2 port as well. So, uh, just using the rear ones at the moment. Um, but, let's go ahead and we'll start her up. So, uh, just the current noise in the background, that's my switch, um, but I'll turn it on now. So, I mean, it's not too loud. Uh, this one's actually the quieter one. The one down the bottom is a bit louder. Um, but we'll wait for it to come on on this monitor here. There we go, Dell. Um, and the BIOS will take a while to boot up, but uh, we'll turn on the bottom one, actually we'll turn this one off, and we'll turn on the bottom one now and I'll show you how much more louder that is. So, not really sure why, but um, yeah, it's a bit louder, uh, and it doesn't really quiet down, or it might quiet down a bit, and you can sort of feel the air going through these front vents. That one, you can feel the air more on the bottom one, more on the louder one, oh, actually, actually. Top one's off, that might explain a lot, but uh, yeah, so um, I will turn it on, actually, well, I'll open it up first, and I'll show you what everything is laid out. Now these lids, the, the bottom one, the bottom lid isn't too bad, but this top lid can be quite an effort to get off and to get back on, so I might just have to, <laughs> there we go. Try not to block the light. And uh, here we go. So, CPU heat sinks. It's got two CPUs. I've got two gigs of DDR ECC RAM. Um, hot, hot plug, hot swappable fans at the rear. Hot swappable fan for cooling your PCI slots. And a push and pull system for cooling both of the heat sinks. And then here you've got your power supply fans. Um, here is the voltage controller, one on each side, a voltage regulator. Um, once again, RAM, a couple of other voltage regulators. Now this is the RAID key for the onboard RAID controller, and this is the RAID RAM, RAID memory. Uh, apart from that, there's just the front bezel sort of thing, front panel. And uh, yeah, so I can show you what it sounds like when this is on and it's open. 
so I mean, you know, it doesn't beep, like, it used to beep, and that used to go orange, when the lid was off and it would say intrusion, but I think I somehow turned it off in the BIOS. And that just thinks everything's A-OK. -okay. What is funny though, is it will tell me, I'm just going to go around, oh, sorry, well you can see that there, now I'm going to take out one of these power supplies, and it will start beeping in a minute. There you go, it's orange. And it'll scroll through what I want it to say, that's all customizable. And then it will scroll through with Power PS1, it should be. Power PS1. So that's basically just telling me that Power Supply 1 is, is not working. And, uh, sorry, I forgot to mention the light at the back. Where is it? Um, that also flashes orange when there's an error. And when I plug Power Supply back in, that light will eventually rectify and go blue, and you can probably hear the fans coming off of there. Pretty powerful. And they cool the system quite well. There we go, now it's blue. Now if I click that button, it starts flashing. And if I go around to the front, the front one will also start flashing. And so that's just, and I can hit it again here, and it goes back to solid. And that's just a form of identification, because whether you have two of them, or whether you have, you know, maybe 20 of them in a rack, and, you know, you want to identify which one has an issue, or you want to identify one, you might push that button, so it can start flashing, or push it, actually push it, so it starts flashing, go around to the back, and then find the right one by locating it using that flashing light and I can just stop it there. And that'll be just a light blue now, I think. And so, yeah, I mean, that's really it. Uh, going on to 13 minutes here. I can put the lid back on. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky with the lid, so I might have to do this with two hands, but, uh, they really are, I only said the other one not so much, but they really are ugh, a bit of a trouble to get the lid back on. Okay, I think I'll cut and I'll come back when I get the lid on. Okay, so I've just put the lid on now. That sort of takes some effort. Uh, and now we're just going to do up, I, I normally just do up one of these thumb screws. But normally, um, yeah, you do up all of these thumb screws here. Um, and it just stops the lid from popping back off. One thing that I was a bit annoyed about is this one here. Um, well, I'll show you the others. How they have the, the sort of actual the screw, and then I have they have like a thing for you to actually pinch. And yes, my hand is never exposed. Uh, here it's just the screw, and that little other plastic bit has come off. So it's not too much of an issue. It's just it's a bit hard on your fingers when you want to wind that one in. So I normally use a screwdriver anyway, but. Um, yeah, so I mean, that's really it. Uh, I might do a video later on uh, about installing and uh, going over some of the specs. So I'll go over the specs now. So basically, this one uh, has a 2400 megahertz clock uh, uh, CPUs, uh, two of them, two Xeons. Um, I'm not sure of the model, don't ask me. <laughs> uh, with a 533 megahertz bus, front side bus. This bottom one is clocked at 2800 gigahertz, oh sorry, 2800 megahertz uh, per, per processor, and it's got a 400 megahertz um, bus, uh, front side bus. <laughs> this one has two gigs of RAM spread across four 512 meg sticks of uh, DDR400 ECC. This one's got four, sorry, two gigs of RAM spread across two one gigabyte sticks that you saw um, of DDR400. Uh, ECC RAM. Uh, yeah, they've both got, well, oh, undo the bottom one here. They've both got Hitachi drives in them. Um, Hitachi Ultra Star. These are 36 gig drives, both of them are. And there's just one of them in each. Um, as I said before, the rest of these caddies are all blanks and they just lock in. I mean, these are all blanks. 
if you can see that. Just a blank. Nothing in it. Nothing actually in it. Uh, so yeah, I mean, that's about it. Uh, I guess i am see you next time when um, I do the software install. So, cool. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I know it's been a bit of a longer video, but I'll catch you later. Alright, one thing that I just forgot to mention is uh, I did actually get the front bezels with them. And so I thought I might as well show you uh, how they attach. And I just got the little key with it as well. It's actually an actual Dell key. It's not being keycard or something. It actually says Dell. Um... Say so Dell, if we can focus, 351. It says, it says 351. So if you want to get that cut, a Dell 351 key, break into my house and open up my servers, do as you wish. But um, I don't really think they're worth it. Um, so these literally just, uh, let me move them out a bit. So these things here, uh, they just like have a latch on that side that sort of locks into a hole in that part of the um, that part of the front and so they, you sort of just got to put them in like that and then they'll lock in and then they will lock in Ugh. so they put them in like that and uh, then on this side it has another one of those things with a little bit of a clip and it goes into there and then it just should just is that it okay should it should clip in I might be doing this wrong I've got them to clip in before it's not like this is my first time oh, oh dear did that just break ah oh, that's lovely that just broke well okay one down but these should this is going really well for me, isn't it? Ugh. Clip in. Go on. Do it for YouTube. Okay, let, let me try the bottom one. Goes in. Clips in. There we go. Okay, let me do that again. So you can see. So it goes in that side. Comes over here and then clips in. Uh, and then to release it, you just have to push that in. And it should pop out. Otherwise, you can't normally pull it out. And the key, uh, the key just way overexposed. The key somehow fits in there. And then you just turn it, turn it that way. Gosh, it's tight. So you turn it. I can't do it a second time. <laughs> oh, I've got to change hands. Turn it that way. Oh, take the key out, and then that prevents you from um, pushing that. Prevents you from pushing that, and they won't actually come out. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I guess I have my bezel down now, but I might be able to super glue it. Probably will super glue it. Um, apart from that, that should be all. Oh, one more thing: single core processors. I forgot to mention. Two Intel Xeon single core processors clocked at 2400 MHz on this one and clocked at 2800 MHz on this one. Right, that should be it. Um, I'll see you next time, guys.